So today let's try to test and fix this donated oscilloscope. Big thanks for the donation. It's Tektronix 500 MHz for channels. And this would be my highest bandwidth oscilloscope. And also an oscilloscope with most channels for me, because now I only have oscilloscopes with at most two channels. It comes with four probes and if it works it would be really handy. Now let's try to plug it in and test it. A fan. I guess the screen has some problems. It's an LCCS shutter. Liquid crystal color shutter or CRT LCD hybrid. There's basically a monochrome black and white CRT and a solid state shutter switching the colors. And I guess the CRT is running but the liquid crystal color shutter is not working. It looks like the layers are dissolving in it or something. Either the shutter is bad or the voltage going into it is bad. It kind of reminds me the effect of an LCD display having a DC voltage on it. Where the display looks like it's dissolving, but the problem is not the display but the driver putting DC voltage into it instead of AC. And it seems to be more layers actually. It's two layers, the green is behind the red. And these weird colored pieces slowly disappear and finally I'm left with just a monochrome display. I switched it to a wide background for it to be more visible. Here I can change the display settings. This is probably the most visible. Connecting the test signal to the channel 1 and it's working here. The response of the menu is bloody slow. Is it normal or is it some fault? This is channel 2, channel 3 working. And channel 4 seems to have some problems. There is a massive DC offset in it. But otherwise the waveform looks good. So far it looks like three fully working channels and a working CRT but a bad liquid crystal color shutter. I can try to fix it and if I can't fix it I can just remove it and run it in monochrome and without the faulty color shutter the CRT wouldn't be bloody dim. At least I guess. I should show a sped up video of this LCD dissolution effect. It looks interesting. Not sure it's the liquid crystal color shutter somehow defective or the driver is bad and it's basically stuck and putting DC into it. I guess one layer would be switching just two colors, so it has to be two layers to switch three colors. Red, green and blue. I'm not very familiar with the controls but it should be easy. The channels, vertical, horizontal trigger, auto set, cursor, display, run, stop. Insta view. Is it instantly posting the waveforms on Instagram? Some rotary selector here and some numbers, not sure what's this for. Here are the test terminals. This clears the menu and these buttons basically press these symbols on the screen. But now of course the internals. It's quite big and heavy, but it's CRT. What do you expect? Here's the back. A power switch, the main plug goes in here. The X-ray emission has been shielded. Boring. Some signal output, some trigger terminals. I can of course connect an external monitor to it to make it even more cumbersome. Whatever that is, whatever that is. And probably the screws to open it. So let's try it. Four screws unscrewed and the cover comes off. Basically just revealing another cover. And this actually slides out. Of course it's bloody big and properly bloody complex. It seems to be layers on layers of a board with tons of chips in it. And there is even a seven segment display hidden inside of it. Looking at the date codes of the chips, most of them seem to be late 984. This crystal oscillator is 985. So this machine is almost 30 years old. Of course at this age the electrolytic capacitors can be already rotten, high ESR, leaking. I have to get to the circuitry of the fourth channel to see if I can do anything about it. Even if I can't I still have three good channels, which is more than any of my other oscilloscopes. And I have to get to the circuitry driving the LCCS and there's no problem with the circuitry. It's probably the LCCS itself and I will just remove it. Let's start disassembling it. I'm not sure if I'm ever going to put it back together but some interconnection board, no component. This is absolutely over the top complex. This is the floppy drive. Am I ever going to put this back together? Let's document where the things go. 
some odd connector here. And this board is completely separated. It has some hidden button on it, a hidden switch and some hidden selectors. Danger high voltage. I'm starting to like it. I probably have to remove all these screws here. Nice. I'm definitely going to forget to reinstall this one and this board is for the controls on the front panel but not for the channels. The input is going to something else. Does this thin thing go into DLCCS? Here's a 24 volt DC fan. Here's the monitor basically with the CRT, the high voltage power supply I guess. The neck board here, some video amplifier transistors on it, some power transistors on heat sinks, some of them is probably the horizontal output transistor. The front frame I just clicked on it, it came off. Here are the buttons near the display and the pads for them. And does this come off? Of course this thing is actually for these buttons, not for the LCCS. And the screws holding this thing are missing actually. Somebody probably already tried to fix it I guess. This screw is missing, this one is missing, well, it's broken off. And I guess I have to remove the floppy drive to remove this frame. The floppy comes out, this metal probably comes out. And this will come out. The bottom screws are still here. The top ones, one missing, one broken. This actually holds both the LCCS and the CRT. Oh, the entire CRT is moving actually. Well, the CRT is partially coming out and there seems to be some resin here. Basically joining the LCCS panel with the CRT. For the curious one is the label on the CRT here. And the cables going into the LCCS seem to be these ones. And they continue into this board here. And from the look of the LCC has the several horizontal stripes on it, I assume there are several sections basically, which are offset, switching the colors at a different time based on how the CRT scans. I guess the refresh rate of the CRT is about 60 Hz, but the vertical deflection actually has to run at 180 Hz, three scans for each full frame. The red, green and the blue component. And as the bottom connected to the four channels, there is this processor board. There is really quite a lot of chips, processors, maybe some memories here. A lot of the circuitry is four times here. One set for each channel. Each channel seems to have some processor with a heat sink, another processor. I guess eight memories here. Plus some circuitry under these shields. I took the screws out. This thing just clicks on it. The screws here. Disconnecting the connectors here and this entire processor board comes out. Analog to digital converters on the other side of it. It's another set of eight chips for each channel here. A lot of smaller components here. Each channel has this here at the input. Does the shield come off? You could probably unscrew these screws. This is probably the probe auto detection. And now this thing should come off. And that's it. Bloody hell, this is an alien technology. I thought I'm removing just the cover and the circuitry is on the board, but it seems the circuitry is actually part of this and there are contacts going through this onto the board. A detail of one of these things. This looks like some laser cut resistive traces to calibrate it. And taking a peek under one of these and there are some relays under it. There has to be something wrong in the fourth channel, in the input section. I'm checking just the basic components, capacitors for shorts. This is showing 40 ohms, the other channels are showing the same, for example. I check the capacitors in the input section. There's really not much else I could easily check here. Of course the problem could be a thin whisker also, so I'm using a toothbrush to check there is no whisker between the pins of the chips, for example, especially in the circuitry of the fourth channel. I can also try compressed air, and it could also be a bad contact, maybe reassembling it might help. I also put a new heat sink compound under these chips. Of course I couldn't resist the curiosity and I took the channel 4 board out here. It was soldered just on one terminal here, and here is the other side of it. Some relays, five of them. And the detail of it, this relay and four other relays. 
then some discrete components, some resistors, capacitors, not much else here. I could try to swap the boards and see which channel is wrong then, but it might not be the best idea. There might be some calibration specific to the boards, and it seems these three are a slightly different version. This is H and this is G3 version. Did somebody already try to replace this one to fix it? Putting the screws back, the layout looks like engine head bolts. I hope it doesn't have any torque sequence. If partially reassembled it and the offset in the fourth channel magically disappeared. Was there just a poor contact somewhere? It works nicely now. I guess I might have actually fixed the fourth channel by adding the heatsink compound here. These cans are getting hot and it's probably the chips on the ceramic boards. And I guess if the chip doesn't have enough thermal contacts to the metal, it might be overheating and this might be causing the massive DC offset. So that's it, all four channels are working now. And in the next episode I will try to fix the colors. And if it's impossible to fix I will delete the color filter, because in a non-functional state it makes the picture bloody dim. In either case I will try to explore how the system works. And I will also explore in more detail the CRT board and the switching power supply board. And if you like my videos please consider supporting my channel on Patreon using the thanks button and subscribing. And big thanks to all of you who already support me, because your support keeps this channel running.